to be part of the Hollywood scene, the studio scene, all of the great artists, I mean, all of the Sinatras, all of the Rat Pack, all of the Brat Pack, the younger kids. I was lucky enough to work with all these kids. It just, I'm just he heading into the 6,000th single that I, happened, I was lucky enough to work <coughs> on. And eight of those became records of the year. You know, that's the top Grammy. We came in the studios with Levi's and T-shirts, smoking cigarettes. The older guys were saying they're gonna wreck the music business. In the hardcore producing area, everybody knew what went on there. I mean, everybody knew that the best musicians played in all the sessions, but we as the general public didn't know. I was in awe then because of Phil Spector. I pulled my car over the side of the road and said, what am I listening to here? very fortunate when I got out of school in Chicago and, and I came to LA, I keep referring to it as falling into a vat of chocolate. If you made a hit record and the word got out immediately, believe me, that was no secret, we were in demand. And then if you get a string of hits going, we're the lucky charm. We gotta use those guys because we wanna get a hit record. And fortunately, we came through. The musicians were really the unsung heroes of all those hit records. When I listen to the record, it is so apparent that these guys were just really so good. And you can see why everybody used them. The Wrecking Crew was the focal point of the music. They were the ones with all the spirit and all the know-how. The public was oblivious that there was this secret star maker machinery. I had no idea that people didn't play their own records until the monkeys came along. Seven records of the year. It was unbelievable. <laughs> They were the stone-cold rock and roll professionals, and there may never be a group of that caliber again. We're doing a movie call for Elvis Presley, and the producer and director, you hear the click, click. We need another song, Billy, and <laughs> Mac Davis and Billy Strange were the composers. Finally, they call back, uh, and Mac Davis and Billy have a sketch of a thing. And they say, looking at Hal, and Hal's looking at me, and we're all looking around. So Hal says, well, why don't we start it with this drum thing? Blah, blah, blah. And then I said, okay, I'll, we'll wait till after that for all of us to come in, and then somebody else, and then Max says something. There was no chart, there was nothing. We made it up on the bandstand, and the song turns out to be a little less conversation. Over the years, that thing has given us more residuals and more reuse checks till this very day. They're doing it again right now. The most asked question is, what is the hardest part of being a studio musician? <laughs> Finding a parking space. <laughs>